we have our um, painting or drawing on our paper. I used the tracing paper that we talked about to trace the pattern out of the book and then we transferred it to our paper with graphite. On our jewelry box we used the white graphite and on our paper we used the dark graphite. First thing we're going to do is base coat all of our flowers. I'm only going to do a few of them to give you an idea. Um, we'll be using our cat's paw to uh, base coat. <clears throat> We're going to start with our leaves. Uh, we start always in the background and move to the front of the painting. So the first thing we're going to do is we have three colors. We have our medium color, which is our Hauser green medium. We have our olive green and we have our avocado. The dark color is for the shading, light color is for the highlight. First thing we're going to do is come down and base coat all of our leaves in the background. Just a simple color book technique. We just want to get that color in there base coated on our leaves. Everywhere there's a leaf, we want to do the base coating. Like that. Then add our little calyxes on the bottom of our buds and our flowers. We're going to base coat those also. Just so that they, we all, we have green on everything that should be green. Okay, like that. Then we're going to clean our brush. And while that's drying, we're going to go into our pinks. We have our medium pink, which is a fuchsia color. We have our dark for shading, which is alizarin, and our light which we're using um, a soft white or a buttermilk color, whichever you prefer. But we're going to do the same technique. We're going to come back down and fill in with our pink every place that there is a flower, a bud or a flower. We want to get all this colored in with a base coat so we have something to build on. And we'll go through and do all of our pink flowers in this color. And the big flowers on our main painting, there are two or three, but we're only going to do one for time's sake. But they're all done the same way, so you just continue on with, with the other flowers in the picture like you do in the, the main ones. Okay, and if it kind of fades out a little bit, go back with a, another coat. Clean our brush a little bit. If you have something that kind of goes over the edge, you just use some water and it acts like an eraser and just kind of cleans up the edges a little bit. Now on our main flowers, we're going to also fill those in. We're going to do each petal. Not one solid color, but we're going to uh, fill in each petal as we go along just to give it a distinction that there are different petals. And once you get everything filled in, by the time you get all the pink, the flowers filled in, your leaves should be pretty well dry so you can go back 
and do work some more on the leaves. We kind of do these paintings in stages. And this stage right now, we call it, <laughs> we kind of call it the ugly stage. Kind of like a teenager that's all elbows and teeth. But they do turn out to be very beautiful in the end. Okay, after we get all everything painted out, our main color, we'll go back, we'll clean our brush. Then we'll go, we're going to change brushes. We're going to go to an angle brush. This is like this. To do our shading on our leaves. And how we're going to do that is we're going to dip it in water. Kind of blot it on our paper. We'll go back and touch just the corner of our angle brush in our dark color. And use our palette paper to kind of what we call walk that across the brush. And then we can, wherever the dark side of our painting is and our light's going to be coming from the left so that would be on the right side we're going to go in and add a dark side to the right side of our leaves you can do it in one stroke or many, depending on what you need to do to get your the dark side of the leaf in there. And if you need to go back and get more paint for the next one, atmospheric conditions can have a lot to do with how your painting turns out. If if it's a rainy day or if it's very hot, sometime. You may have to go back and add more paint or add a little more water. Just as long as you have dark side on one side of your leaf and then we're going to highlight the other side. So that it looks something like that. Then on our little calyxes, on our flowers, they need a distinction too. So anywhere a flower, uh, one side is underneath another side, you, that's going to have a shadow on it. So what we're doing right now is establishing our shadows on our leaves. And then on the bottom, the outside. And like I said, if something doesn't look right to you, you go you can go back and just paint over it. That's one nice thing about acrylics, they are very forgiving. When you get all of that done, we're going to go with our light color, our avocado, I mean not our avocado, but our olive green color. And we're going to highlight the other side of our leaf, the side that's in the sunshine. This gives your leaf a three-dimensional um, effect so that it doesn't look flat. And look like that you just used like you did a color book. We want our leaves to stand out and look three-dimensional. And we're going to do that on our little calyxes. We're going to add a bit of a highlight in the sunshine section. Like that. Now we'll come back with our liner brush if you if I can get a get it in here well 
and we're going to take go back with our dark avocado add a little bit of our soft black to our our avocado with our liner brush then we're going to come in and put our stems in because everything's got to have a stem to sit on so that we so that our flowers don't look like they're just hanging out there in the air okay when we have our flower stems in then we're going to go back and we're going to highlight our flowers we're going to do the same technique take our angle brush i'm using in the three eighths that angle brushes come in all different sizes um, it's a matter of finding a size that works for you now we're going to go into our alizarin crimson do the same technique we're going to put some paint on our brush walk it on our, our paper till it, it kind of moves across the brush then we're going to come back in and we're going to shadow the dark side of our flower and that would be on the side away from the light source if you need more painting more paint just go back and get some more you don't want this a solid line You want to look like the shadowed edge, and so you can take the other side of your angle brush and kind of fuzz up that painted line so it doesn't. And then where on your flower, where the petals overlap the stem, the main part of your flower you want to put a little bit of a shadow there too okay that's what the your buds and the bottom of your flower should look like now on our petals <coughs> excuse me we're going to switch back to our cat's paw. We're going to take our lizard crimson. And we're going to do a technique that we call um, dry brushing. And in our petal, we're going to take that um, dark color and put that down in what we call the throat of the flower. You're just going to touch it pull it up towards the top of your flower just to look to give your flower some depth because it is a trumpet it's not flat so that it looks something like that then we're going to come in, use that same technique with our soft white. We're going to load the brush, wipe a lot of it off on your paper towel. Then we're going to come back in and on the top part of the petal, the outside, we're going to touch and pull towards, whoops, Touch and pull towards the dark color, the throat. Mm -hmm. 
this again will give your flower a, th a three-dimensional look. We're going to do this all the way around all of our petals. And if it looks like your petals are, are kind of uh, sinking into the background, you can take a little bit of the white on the end of your brush and just kind of touch the edge of your petal to show that this, the sun is kind of bouncing off of that, just to give it a little bit of a little more distinction. I know I'm going kind of fast here, but we will, when you're doing this on your own, you can take your time, clean up things that need to be cleaned up. But that's pretty much what it looks like on your flower. Now we're going to go back in with our liner brush again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to take some of our soft black with our liner brush, make a point on our brush, and we're going to come back in and we're going to kind of deepen that area down in the throat of our flower and bring some lines up because it has little stem, or not stems, but... Uh, It's easier to always pull away so that you don't have sharp points, I mean so that you don't have flat points on the end of your single drawn lines. And this takes a little practice. Do it on paper first before you do it on an actual project. Okay, that's what your flowers are going to look like. Now we're going to move on to our hummingbird. We're going to do some base coating, just like we did the flowers. We're going to take our soft white. We're going to base coat the breast part of the bird. Then we're going to take some of our Lizarin Crimson. We're going to do the, the throat area. We're going to take our avocado. That's the dark green color. And we're going to paint the head. Get down here so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to, in the back, That's the body and the head and the back with the green. We're going to take a little bit of our black, mix it with some of our avocado to make kind of a soft greenish black color. And we're going to come in and paint the tail
and along the edge of our wing with this dark color. That's just show the bone structure of the wing. Clean our brush. Come back to our slate gray color. We're going to paint in the rest of the wing. Paint in the rest of the wing with our slate gray. This will kind of give the the wing a transparent look. We'll clean our brush. Now we're going to come back in with our liner brush. And we're going to take our soft black again make a point with our brush and we're going to dot him an eye and we're going to paint the beak Reinforce the top of the wing. Do a little bit of outlining on the tail just to give the feathers a, a look. Okay. couple little just a little dots and a, a bit of a distinction towards the eye the little tiny dot of white whoops if you get too much let it dry come back with the black and redo that Okay, now we're going to go in with our soft white. And we're going to put some leaf distinctions, not leaf, I'm sorry, some wing feathers. I'm going to paint right over that black, that gray to distinguish the feathers. See if I can't give him a better eye. That's what your painting's going to look like. Always step back and check things out. Then I'll show you what it looks like on <clears throat> our actual jewelry box when you add all the flowers and the bird. It's going to make a nice little box for my four-year-old grand, great-granddaughter for her jewelry. Thank you for painting with me. Um, these be I need to tell you that these uh, videos will get better as I go along. I'm just learning how to do these videos. So, 
paint, come paint with me. God bless you. And I will do something great on the next one. This is Judy. Bye.